Hi, I'm Andy Teach, host of Andy's Awesome Adventures, and welcome to Erie, Pennsylvania. This video and all my Erie videos are sponsored by Visit Erie, the tourism promotion agency for Erie County. To learn more about everything there is to do and see in Erie, please check out their website, visiterie.com. There's a link in the video description. My niece and I had 72 hours in Erie, so I'm going to show you our exact itinerary during that time. Like many people, we had heard of Erie, but didn't know much about it, but we were pleasantly surprised. Day 1. We arrived in Erie on a Tuesday afternoon, and the first thing we did was check into our hotel, the Hampton Inn and Suites Erie Bayfront. This hotel is a year old, and I believe it's still Erie's newest hotel. It has a really nice lobby and breakfast area. It has a fitness center, an indoor pool, and the room is really comfortable with a great view. Visit Erie recommended that we eat dinner at the brewery at Union Station. They had great food and drink. But the coolest thing for me was the history of this place. It used to be a train station and three US presidents, Lincoln, Roosevelt, and Truman have stopped here. And baseball legend Babe Ruth ate at the old diner here. Oh, and this place is haunted. Outside is a beer garden right by the train tracks where there's still a working Amtrak station. Day two, we had a great breakfast at the Sheraton Erie Bayfront. And then we ventured up to the Skyway, which connects the hotel to the Bayfront Convention Center. From here, you can get some great views of Presque Isle State Park, Presque Isle Bay, and one of the many marinas. After breakfast, we got a private tour of the intimate Fort LaBeouf Museum, which is all about the French and Indian War, which predates the Revolutionary War. Our museum guide, Don, is a former history teacher, and he gave us a great history lesson about the war during the tour. Part of the museum is outside, which features possibly the only statue in the world of George Washington in a British uniform. We then headed to lunch at Luminary Distilling, Firm and Cider, an eatery and micro distillery featuring food, cider, pastries, and many alcoholic beverages. We were given a behind the scenes tour by co-owner Joel, who explained how the alcohol and cider are made. After lunch, we visited Erie's number one attraction with over 4 million visitors a year, Presque Isle State Park, so we can take a 90 minute guided boat tour at Presque Isle Bay and Lake Erie on the Lady Kate. This was a great way to see the park as well as the bayfront. For dinner, we ate at Oliver's Rooftop Restaurant, which is at the top of our hotel, the Hampton Inn and Suites Erie Bayfront. It's named after War of 1812 hero Oliver Hazard Perry. This beautiful restaurant features some great food and great views of the bayfront. And when the weather is nice, the windows are retracted and it's an open air restaurant. Day three, we were given a private tour of the Hagen History Center on Watson Curtsy Mansion prior to their reopening. The highlights for me were seeing a sword used by Commodore Perry in the Battle of Lake Erie during the War of 1812 Architect Frank Lloyd Wright's original San Francisco office that was moved to the Hagen History Center and reassembled there, and the many displays featuring artifacts that tell the story of Erie's important contributions over the centuries to the U.S. military. The Watson Curtsy Mansion features some beautiful architecture and stylish rooms, as well as showcasing many artifacts from the Civil War. We then made a second trip to Presque Isle State Park, and this time we went to one of its beaches, which is on Lake Erie. These beaches comprise Pennsylvania's only shoreline. For lunch, we went to a 1950s Americana diner named Sarah's Restaurant. It features hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken fingers, and fries, but the highlight for me was the ice cream, which was awesome. After Sarah's, we worked off our lunch by going to one of Erie's 16 hiking trails that are part of the Greater Erie Regional Trails Network. It's called the Lake Erie Arboretum at Frontier Park. It's a really pretty area with lots of greenery and peace and quiet. Our last stop of the day was at Bicentennial Tower, which at 187 feet tall, gives you the best views of the Erie Bayfront, Presque Isle Bay, and Presque Isle State Park. 
It was built in 1995 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the founding of Erie. Day 4 Our last stop in Erie was the Erie Maritime Museum, which is dedicated to the War of 1812. The war pitted the United States of America and her allies against Great Britain and her allies. One critical battle was the Battle of Lake Erie, which was won thanks to Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry. I really learned a lot about the war, including the reasons why the United States declared war on Britain, what happened during the war, and what happened after the war. The museum features many displays, including the mast of the U.S. Brig Niagara, a reconstructed gun deck of the U.S. Brig Lawrence, and original artifacts of the USS Wolverine, formerly the USS Michigan, the first U.S. Navy ironhold ship. We left Erie in the early afternoon, 72 hours after we arrived. We did see a lot of interesting things and places, but there's a lot we didn't get a chance to see, which is why we're planning on returning to Erie in the near future.